Ramesh Babu Vaishali was the winner of the FIDE Grand Swiss event, uh, the women's tournament on the Isle of Man recently, and so she qualifies for the candidates, uh, women's candidates tournament taking place next year. I want to show you one of her games. Um, this is really impressive. And also, if you're interested in uh, the latest opening theory and would like a nice system against the Rishta Rouser, then keep watching because this is very trendy and very, very dangerous. So Vaishali playing white. What impressed me about her play was that she is always open for uh, a tactical skirmish. She certainly doesn't shy away from complications. But also there was true grit in her play. You know, she also played you know, quite a few long end games, sometimes on the worse end of things, and you know, really showed incredible determination. So she has character, and that, of course, is vital if you're going to be a winner in chess. Now, you might recall that um, we looked, we've already looked at a game by Abhimanyu Mishra against Vasil Ivanchuk that went e6 from this position. I should say this is the Rishta Rouser variation of Sicilian. So Ivanchuk played the standard e6 and a6, and Mishra exchanged on c6 very unusual, seemingly anti-positional, but actually succeeded in getting a huge attack. Just put the bishop here, rook in the middle, and this is very, very dangerous for black, as Ivanchuk discovered. Now, Vaishali is playing Tan Zhongyi, and Zhongyi played bishop d7 which is reasonable. Uh, this can also transpose into main lines after a6 and e6, uh, but often this envisages very quick play on the c-file. And it's interesting that Vaishali played in a similar way to Mishra. She simply took on c6, and as I mentioned before, this is quite a trendy way of playing. You don't mind your opponent recapturing like this because you bring your bishop back to c4 very quickly and that can shut the b-file. Zhongyi played bishop takes c6 and Vaishali exchanged on f6. And that's really interesting, not bishop c4, but bishop b5. And a few very strong players have played like this. I note, if I'm looking through the database, uh, Anish Giri has played like this, for example. So, why this move? Well, it's it, first thing, you eliminate one of the bishops. So you're only you, you you get rid of the bishop pair basically, or one of the bishops. And so that's positionally desirable, and you want to castle very quickly. And you're just saying to black, well, where does your king go? So it's about rapid development and also it's very positional too. It's also the computer quite likes this way of playing for white, which um, helps to give you confidence when you're doing this kind of thing. So rook g8, played by black. So as I said, black kind of has a dilemma here. You know, you're saying, as white, where where does the king go? Do you go queen side, king side? Does it stay in the middle? You know, black's pawns could be a strength, but there are also certain weaknesses there as well. So rook g8. Okay, that's all very well if you want to use the g file, but it does mean it limits black to a certain extent because we now know as white that Kingside casting is not going to happen. Vaishali castled. Queen d7. This looks reasonable. Bishop takes. And pawn takes. So positionally, you could say this is desirable for black. The c6 pawn covers the d5 square. And the b file opens. But still the question remains, what is black going to do with the king? 
and Vaisali continues with the standard F4. Um, don't always advise using the f-pawn, uh, but this is important because sometimes we can play f5, and particularly if you know if black is going e6, then f5 could be useful to break things open on on the f-file. But also it gains a little bit of space for white on the king side, so you know we can play the queen up later on. You might even be able to shift your rook to the third rank. Rook b8, open file, queen f3, nice move. Don't waste time. Remember, every move counts in the opening. So instead of defending, just bring the, the queen out. So why not rook takes b2? Well, that would be a dream for white because you can see the rook already threatens to come down here um, and Black is just not getting out of this alive if, if the king can't castle. And if rook b6, well, a4, you're going to be able to crack things open here. Instead, I think black played a good move. Queen g4. In this kind of situation, you would like to exchange queens because that will take a bit of pressure from the king. And actually... I'm surprised that black didn't exchange after b3 was played by Vaishali. And I think it would have been best to exchange queens here. Now, this is still, I would say, quite an unclear endgame. Um, because it's, a, it's an odd pawn structure. But you never know, at some point, it could turn out well for black. It's very hard to say. You know, maybe f5 here. Yeah, instead of b3, I think queen f2 was a reasonable idea. Um, anyway, b3 played. Rook b4. Rook d1. I still think queen f2 would have been reasonable there. And this is black's last chance to exchange queens. After e6, Vaishali played queen f2. So the queen looks down here, and that's already quite dangerous. Yes, I realise the queen and rook are lined up against g2. You've got to be careful of that. But white has that under control. You can see that these rooks are split. Yes, that's a cardinal sin in my book. If we could somehow transport the rook on b4 to somewhere on the king side, one of these squares then it could be quite interesting. But they can't connect. This is the problem. f5 played. a3, the rook is pushed back. And rook d3. Mm, yeah, well, now we can see very well how the territory that white has because of these pawns on e4 and f4 allows the rook to, to swing across and now there is a threat to play rook g3 and skewer queen and rook. Bishop e7, so little tactical episode. If rook g3, then bishop h4 is winning for black, win material. So that king h1 played and now rook g3 is a threat because bishop takes queen would no longer be check. So bishop h4 stops rook g3. And queen d2. That's interesting. Vaishali isn't tempted by g3. The pawn is just doing fine here. And the queen switches over to the d-file. So we've got to watch out for that. So therefore, d5. Queen is pushed back. Now, what do you do against this big center? Now, this is what I was talking about earlier, that... Positionally, this could be quite nice for black. Beautiful centre pawns, actually. The problem is black's pieces. These rooks don't coordinate. And also the king is stuck in the middle. If we could magically transfer the king into the corner of the board, then uh, I would favour black. But with the king in the middle, that's tricky. So how did Vaishali exploit this? 
First of all, she took on f5. And now here's a good move. Are you ready? White to play. What would you do here? White to play. Time for a little think, maybe? Knight e2. Very simple. The knight on c3 actually doesn't have much future there. I guess it could perhaps spin out there. But from e2, it's going to d4 to hassle the queen. And it really starts to look at some sensitive spots in the position. What if black tries to prevent that with c5? Then b4. Just undermine this pawn. And actually, the king is looking even worse then. And this is a really difficult position for black. Because if the knight gets to d4 and you play f5, then the king is opening. So e5 played. Now, that can't be taken. There's a pin. But oof, that looks really loose with the king on e8. Rook e3. Pins. That's nice. So you're tempting those pawns forward. If the pawn comes forward, then we can start the process of breaking up that pawn chain. And look at that king. It's dreadfully placed on e8. So rook e7. And the queen moves in to b4. Good move. And this is a serious threat. You know, the rooks just don't coordinate here, and that king gets in the way. And if only you could flip the king the other side of the rook, or the rook could magically leap over the king. But no, it's a tough one. Queen g6 played to guard and threaten mate. And this is really brave. I really like the way that Vaishali plays. g4. Wow. Advancing the pawn in front of the king... And there's, there's a big gap behind those pawns. However, white's pieces are actually very well placed to cover all those squares. And black simply can't get round the fact that the king is in massive trouble. I mean, for example, e4. Well, you take a check, take a pawn. <laughs> it's not getting better. So I think Zhongyi plays you could say, almost the only way to make sense of black's pieces. And that's to try to open the king side. Otherwise, the major pieces are doing absolutely nothing. But Vaishali calculates really well. She took here and took here and black took here. So, you know, if you haven't calculated this through, then this could be perilous. But she's worked out that her attack is just breaking through quicker than Black's. A few checks, that doesn't do any harm. And now she found an excellent move. Knight f4. Attacking the queen. And starting to threaten some nasty stuff here. The queen actually needs to keep hold of the rook. For example, if queen takes pawn, then a check. Check, and you take that rook again. And these pieces actually protect the king really well. Black has no way to break through. So after knight f4, the queen just dropped back to h7. And now another check, and another check. Now, if king c7, then you can take here, and actually that's um, make very quickly. So the king came to d7. Another check. Another check. There's no harm in repeating. You can just make absolutely sure of what you're doing. It gets nearer to the time control as well. Queen c6. Very simple. So this one is dropping. And the game finished like this. Rook c7. A check. Another check. Rook d1. Threatening that one. Queen h4 and rook e d3. And obviously that bishop is just dropping. And yep, the knight and rook are covering beautifully. So there's no way through for black on the king side. Very nice game from Vaishali. I like 
the kind of courage she showed here in, in playing moves like um, G4. Um, and she always had her eye on the prize, which was that king on E8. So this is a very interesting way of playing, just very practically exchanging this off and rapid castling and then just playing and you know seeing how black makes sense of that king in the middle of the board because it doesn't have a very natural home to go to somehow and yes do check out the Mishra Ivanchuk game which had some similarities although in that case the king went on the queen to the queen side but it was still all about rapid development there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, it be very interesting to see how Vaishali gets on in the candidates next year. But I think she's she seems to me to be improving all the time. Um, so, yeah, a great achievement for the family, for Vaishali and for Pragnananda, who are both in the candidates.